Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the third episode of Diplomatically Speaking With. My name is Aim Mozani and as always, I will be the host of this Diplomatically Speaking With. As you might know by now already, DSW for short, is a series of interviews with diplomatic core in Malaysia. For each DSW, we'll be talking about the history, context and opportunities of bilateral relations between foreign nations and Malaysia. DSW is brought to you by KSI Strategic Institute for Asia Pacific or KSI for short, and KSI is a top-ranked public policy think tank based in Malaysia. I am the Director of External Relations for KSI. Um, and just a, one line on KSI, KSI is an independent think tank with a vision to build better nations in Asia Pacific. And we are the leading curator of impactful and innovative events uh, and conferences in the country and the region. Today, we are diplomatically speaking with the Ambassador of Chile to Malaysia, uh, His Excellency, Mr. Diego Velasco von Pilgrim on everything Chile, Malaysia relations. Uh, Your Excellency, how are you? Don Zaim, uh, very well, thank you. Muchas gracias. Selamat pagi, selamat siang. Um, right. I'm very, very honored to be here with you and the team from KSI. <laughs> and uh, very happy to, to do diplomatically speaking, if I can say, let's talk it human speaking. And uh, <laughs> as uh, uh, you know, person to person, because uh, it's about culture begins everything. Uh, culture, it, it is consubstantial to diplomacy. Without knowing cultures, we have no diplomacy. Perfect. Thank you so much, uh, Excellency, for that, for that uh, you know, st- starting off with that, with that thought. Um, let me start with the first question then. Uh, Excellency, this is not the first time you're in Malaysia. In fact, you were there to uh, help establish the embassy of Chile in Kuala Lumpur in the late 1980s. Uh, Your Excellency, or Don Diego, as you prefer to be called, tell us more about your background and your appointment as ambassador of Chile to Malaysia. If I may say it a bit uh, lightly, I seem to be some of the uh, dinosaurs of our foreign foreign services because I began uh, 43 years ago in this service. I joined the Diplomatic Academy after uh, studying some uh, uh, University studies, I decided to switch into the Diplomatic Academy. And to my surprise, they accepted me. And uh, here, uh, and my first post, uh, uh, when they asked me, where would you like to go? I said, I want to go to a developing nation similar to Chile, as far as away as it can be from Chile. I said, why? Because I want to know the world and I want to know what I can do. I want to see what we So uh, I was appointed then. As my first position in 1982, as a third secretary and foot soldier in the embassy of Chile in Indonesia, who at the time was also concurrent in Malaysia. And then comes a long story uh, of, of love and work with uh, ASEAN because I've been posted, uh, besides in Indonesia, three times uh, in different positions. Uh, I was uh, uh, posted in Thailand for five years, uh, three years in the Philippines. Uh, and Singapore for a couple of years, and uh, one perhaps one of the most uh, impressive things for my life and development as a diplomat has been to be appointed as a foot soldier to open the embassy of Chile, uh, the resident embassy of Chile in Kuala Lumpur 31 years ago, with 1.3 million people, now 7 million people. And that is my general background. And I have uh, different uh, studies in the strategic business economic uh, management, uh, security, uh, security issues, and uh, I've been uh, very much uh, focused on, on, on the development of uh, tools uh, to develop trade. Uh, the first experience of uh, what we call it uh, external assistance for trade in Chile was done actually from Malaysia when I was in my first post here. So, well, imagine I was five blocks away here uh, in uh, Jalan Maj, uh, foot soldier, and uh, 31 years after, I'm on a 36th floor in the middle of uh, KLCC. Uh, it's quite a change, and it's a big challenge. Beautiful to be back. Wow, amazing. From foot soldier to ambassador. Quite a story. Um, Don Diego, you know, being, being recently appointed uh, as the ambassador of Chile to Malaysia, what are your top three priorities uh, in this country? Ah, the top priorities. Uh, Well, I have a list, uh, you know, I suppose uh, every ambassador has uh, its own draft list. But in this case, uh, my list was uh, very specific. Revitalize what has been done 
in the 30 years since the embassy was established here. And that uh, my main priority is to go through the 10 different agreements that we have signed ever since from 1990 and 1991 until now, and uh, about a dozen of um, memorandum of understandings among different agencies. Uh, we have a very rich history, uh, and then we, we was very active uh, in the early 1990s, uh, to the point that we have across investments. Uh, Chile was building ships in, in Kuching with the uh, Malaysian shipyards. Uh, we've been cooperating in Antarctica. We've been doing things in security. Uh, uh, we have uh, cooperated in ASEAN, in APEC, and uh, also uh, uh, Malaysia actually started its uh, entry into South America through Chile with investments beyond $200 million, building uh, satellite cities with trains, railroads, and, and uh, other, uh, you know, uh, quite uh, substantial, uh, um, what do you say, openings. So um, this uh, and the process has been slowly getting used to the normal, you see, and so the point of my appointment here as, as is being to promote and to uh, revitalize all those agreements and put them into context 30 years after. Very, very interesting. You mentioned the, the keyword that I got from there was revitalize what has been done uh, yeah. by the embassy since the 1990s. Ambassador, before we get into the meat of the discussion, which I think is important, could you tell us maybe some... Uh, historical context between both countries, uh, Chile and Malaysia, if, if, if there is one, uh, I'm wondering if you can share if or whether it starts in 1989, 1990, or has it started before that uh, between uh, Malaysia and Chile, and even between the two peoples, between Malaysians and Chileans? So you're talking about decades, centuries? All right. Yes, sir. <laughs> Let's begin with, and this is straight to the young people. I think I want to stress it. This is to the young people. When people think behind, uh, you know, Malaysia is 1957, right? That is when it's, it's the day of independence. Now, I was born in 1957. For me, those 63 years are a whole life. For a country, is seems like too young. But is Malaysia young? I don't think so. 500 years ago, one young person, that probably 16 or 17 years old, was uh, taken in Sumatra as the translator of Ferdinand Magellan, translator of Malay and Portuguese. And that person is Henry of Malacca, or uh, Panglima Awan, or Panglima Hitam. It is actually uh, a Malaccan person that before he was 20 years old, he was already crossing the Atlantic from Portugal into uh, South America and hit the Strait of Magellan, Chilean territory, and uh, then crossed Pacific back to Philippines. So we're talking about what people could do 500 years ago without internet, without letters, without mail, you know, without water in the ships. So that sort of, of spirit is what we would like to recapture. Yeah, especially after in these times of COVID. Now, go a bit closer, a few centuries closer. By 1850, the Chilean gold coin was used in all this region as a currency. You say, why? Because by that time, Chilean vessels were, fly, were going between Valparaiso, <clears throat> excuse me, and, and India, trading copper and trading spices. And, uh, and, and textiles, if I'm not mistaken, 1850, Chile was only uh, 30 years uh, independent. We have our uh, independence in uh, 1810. So it was, yeah, 40 years and independence. And we're, our ships were already hitting here. And actually, interesting to, know, to think, one day this, uh, uh, the, this ship was in Singapore uh, at the time, and they needed to, to go back to sea. They say they couldn't, they couldn't protect them out of the harbor because uh, the, the garrison has not been paid. So the garrison in Singapore was paid with Chilean gold bullion, and the captain got a check, a note, to uh, cash with a, a, a good interest in the vibrant ship in India. So thus, 
that's we've been present quite a while in the region. I'm very closely now. Uh, well, uh, we have been welcomed by Malaysia. Yeah, yes. particularly in, in 30 years ago, we started working in our embassy here. Uh, we've been welcomed uh, by Malaysia uh, and promoted uh, uh, as a, as a partner in ASEAN. We enter uh, to ASEAN through Malaysia, and because of ASEAN supported us, we went in APEC. Later, Malaysia has supported us for us. We become, you know, the standard treaty of amity and cooperation of ASEAN. And after Germany, uh, we were the second uh, country in the world that uh, was uh, granted the, uh, the partnership, like uh, development partners, yeah, with ASEAN. So it's a, it's a long history, uh, but what we want to do is to put them all together in this time of COVID, where we can read and talk. Very interesting. You, you, you know, it's so interesting that you mentioned about um, uh, Henry of Malacca or Henry K of Malacca. Uh, you, you know, when you, when you look at the, the history about him being a Malay member of the Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Malagan, uh, Mangalan's uh, expedition, uh, which then circumvented around the whole world, something that I think we don't really learn in school. But you mentioned such an interesting point that, you know, whenever we have these this talks about history, usually the history draws back all the way to hundreds of years, not just during independence or even like like we mentioned earlier about 1989, 1990 when the embassy was open. Uh, and I think it's interesting when you talk about the trade that happens between uh, in the region, in Singapore, using Chilean gold coin. Uh, it goes to show that it's a rich history between people to people before the states were born and, and, and then the states uh, cooperated with each other. So thank you so much for sharing that. And I think um, you know, it's, it's interesting that I think we, we, you know, sometimes you can talk about history for so long, it can become a part two of this interview. But let's, let's, let's go into the, the, <laughs> the, the next um, segment. And I want to ask you about um, uh, just harking back to the point you mentioned about revitalizing the diplomatic relations between Malaysia and Chile. H how would you describe the relations now between Chile and Malaysia? Okay, let me just find you one thing. It's not revitalizing the diplomatic relations because they're splendid are very active, revitalizing the bonds among the peoples. This is a different thing. Those are, because of the generations change, and not always a generation passes all the knowledge into the next one, and both sides, it's like both societies are sort of not having them, uh, each other into the, into the front. But the diplomatic relations are very, extremely robust, at the point that uh, Malaysia uh, has only one uh, free trade agreement with the entire American continent from the North to the South Pole, and that is with Chile. That was 2010. That's how robust it is. Uh, and uh, and uh, we have a, a number of other uh, agreements which are active uh, in, in the moment, but what we want to do is put them to date to these conditions. There was no internet 30 years ago uh, the way we, we use it today. See, and everything was traveling. Yeah? Uh, now we can see each other from anywhere. So this, this is how we want to revitalize it and fine tune it in today's world. Um, so uh, what, uh, what we can do uh, in, 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 the, in this case is actually reach out to people or reach into people because people is in their own homes, working, right? It's not reach out, it's reach in. A bit of an intrusion, if you say, let's try to be friendly and get to know each other, you know, uh, because the relationship is not only trade. That is, trade has a lot to do, but food has a lot to do. Yeah, it goes with trade, but do you know about Latin American food? Perhaps tacos, but that's what Mexico, one of many, right? <laughs> and what do we know about Malaysia? Not even Nasi Lema, right? But we know about the rubber and, and uh, you know, the gas from Petronas and, and those, and you know, the rubber gloves nowadays, more than over. But we need to know more about the people. Uh, why is the point uh, of stressing on the people? Because if we get the people to know each other, they will understand what the others need to understand. It's not that what do Chileans think about Malaysians or what I would like to better know what do Malaysians think about Chileans. How do we differentiate into Malaysian mind out of the entire Latin America? But what Latin America is like the whole lot 
some with sombreros, other guys with samba, and a lot of soccer. Is that right? It hasn't changed much. So eventually, some tennis. Okay, yeah, some tennis. Chino Rios and here and there, or Gonzalez, or Mazu. But no more. Now, how many people know, I'm going to go into a totally different sport, how many people know that we have two Chilean City PGA goal? Right since last year and this year, top brass. Mr. Neiman uh, is one of them. He has been hitting uh, already dressed in the green jackets within a year of joining the PGA Tour. Now, Mr. Neiman is a rubber man. I think if I would be in the rubber business, I would hire him to show how flexible rubber could be. You know, because <laughs> he's fantastic. And, uh, and this is one of, of the elements, soccer. That you would say, okay, revitalizing. 20 years ago, we had 50, 50 players and trainers from Chile playing in Southeast Asia, in Malaysia, in Thailand, in Vietnam, in Indonesia, in Singapore. And we have none. You tell me why. I don't know. We still have, we still play soccer, right? Everybody says hello, hello to the European League. And how many go for the uh, um, Cup, uh, you know, the Americas Cup? Blah, blah. The, the Copa America is the oldest in the world. Why is it not known here? Now, if we get to know each other, we have a lot in common, too much in common that we don't believe. Even words in Latin sport are, are, are part of Malay language. So why we don't recognize that? Because so we have not done enough to get the people to know each other, to laugh with each other, to see each other through the eyes. Once you see the eyes of somebody, you know who you're talking to. And then perhaps you would like to make a business or, you know, what did you do with your drones? Malaysian drones are a key uh, export of Malaysia into Chile and Latin America. They are industrial drones, not just to play, you know, Industrial, they're using for mining. Now, the guys in Chile use drones. Why they don't learn to use the drones the way as pilots of drones? You have a school of drones here. The young people like to talk about these things. And they will find reasons to connect, reasons to develop in their professions, and obviously it's business. Very That's interesting. So, That's very interesting. You yeah, you, you mentioned about uh, revitalizing the bonds between people, not so much about diplomatic relations, uh, avenues for diplomat diplomatic uh, relations beyond trade and economy, food diplomacy, golf diplomacy, soccer diplomacy, football diplomacy to Copa America. Uh, let, let's, let's go straight into the economic side. Uh, and, uh, you mentioned uh, earlier about uh, the Malaysia-Chile free trade agreement, which is the first bilateral FTA between Malaysia and a Latin American country, which is an important fact. And, and, and Malaysia was also at one point uh, Chile's main trading partner in, 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 South, in Southeast Asia. Can you let us know more about the trade and economic relations between Malaysia and Chile? Uh, yes. Uh, let me put it this way. It's not the first free trade agreement of Malaysia with any Latin American country. I'm saying the entire continent, from Canada to Tierra del Fuego, there is not another wow. TLC with the entire American continent. We call America, uh, for us on the South, and this is, this is our America. <laughs> it's a bit different than the North. It's different. But there's no such thing like uh, with any other country in, in the American continent. So uh, now, what is a trade? Uh, well, mostly, and, and, and by, by uh, have been uh, focused on, you know, rubber, copper, uh, and, uh, say, um, certain commodities like uh, uh, fish mills and so on. But developing into it, uh, we have a lot of apparel and uh, uh, automotive parts from, from Malaysia. Uh, I think palm oil is also part of it. And we're doing, again, I said about food, right? Well, a lot of fruit from Chile is, is being sold in Malaysia. Uh, a lot. I mean, forget the grapes, you know, the uh, red globe. Personally, I find it too big to my taste, but people love it here. And mm, I'm happy they love it. Please have it. Uh, uh, wine, which is one of uh, our elements, uh, is also a part of the, obviously, uh, uh, not the major part. And a lot of berries. Uh, Chile is very little known about what 
place uh, has in the world of berries. Uh, Chile, um, uh, in, in cherries, the king of cherries is actually a Chilean entrepreneur in the world, right? Now, other commodities, you would say this is not a commodity, salmon. Salmon today is a commodity. We, at a certain point, we became the largest exporter uh, of salmon in the world, exporting to all over the world, including Japan and Europe, Malaysia, and so on. Seafood here is, is you see, and you really want to have it. <laughs> um, there's a lot about the of, uh, seafood and, and also produce uh, on um, the forestry and wood and paper. These are the general lines. Uh, but I think uh, our, uh, our work should go beyond that, to go in, into uh, transferring uh, mutual knowledge uh, into new industries. Yeah? Uh, you would say, in what sort of way? Uh, everybody knows about magic here, right? Magic. Uh, corporation, the state corporation. Well, magic. When uh, the Malaysia wanted to establish, uh, you know, a promotion for entrepreneurship and and, uh, and startups, did a, a tour around the world, and the model they follow most closely as easier to to reach Malaysia was actually the Chilean model of Corfo. So they went to Chile, they talked with Corfo, and then they established ma magic here. Uh, that is very important because we have actually the bond of those who create new jobs, especially in this technology time. Uh, so I think it's not only trade of goods, but exchange of services and know-how that what we could do both ways. It's... it's um... Thank, thank you so much for going through that that uh, the laundry race of commodities. And I think your, your last point was super interesting. I actually happened to work in Magic. I was a former employee of Magic, uh, the Malaysian Global Innovation and Creativity Center. And what the ambassador said, if I can provide some context, is that Magic, yes, Magic went around the world and they, they landed on, finally, on Sarap Chile. Uh, and Sarap Chile was, is a seat accelerator by the Chilean government, uh, based in Santiago, Chile. Um, and, and, and a lot of the programs, especially the accelerator programs in Magic, is actually based on Sarap Chile's uh, model. Obviously, it's been Malaysianized uh, to suit local yeah, context, but, uh, but you're absolutely right. I see it never crossed my mind, Ambassador, but you, you, you brought it back home that, yes, you're right. Sarap Chile is actually the, the, the startup slash entrepreneurship model that Magic brought to Malaysia. And I think it has been that model ever since 2013, 2014. So it's very interesting that you mentioned that. Um, uh, Ambassador, could you could you deep dive further for us in terms of um, this this you know going beyond this uh, tangible uh, commodities? You know what what are sort of the, the the areas of growth that you see for 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 Chile and Malaysia? Uh, I know that you mentioned in the previous discussion that we had about the different focus areas that we had uh, between the both countries. Could you could you elaborate further for our audience uh, in the sort of the intangible space of 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 uh, uh, growth areas? Okay, I will give you a, an intangible projection from a tangible matter, right? The tangible matter is the, to do it again, what Malaysia did 30 years ago, which was reach to South America on its own, on a Malaysian airline plane, with 200 people, 50 of them entrepreneurs, four ministers, the, and the uh, prime minister of Malaysia, then Dr. Tun Mahathir. Oh, 30 years ago, and it was airborne. And then you had the link with Latin America, the bonds to Brazil and Argentina and, and Peru and Colombia start growing, growing, growing. Well, let's do it again, but not flying. Let's do it underwater. You say, how come? Because Chile has already approved the Chile, Australia, Japan submarine optic cable on the South Pacific. A 1.3 billion US dollars investment, which is already on the process. And that is the bond that we will have South America and ASEAN countries. And those countries who have a very big step in development, like the then called Malaysia Multi, Multimedia Corridor, and now, no, uh, um, uh, it has a name, another name of the city um, today. Uh, and, uh, you know, the development of te technologies, new technologies and uh, research centers uh, are going to uh, 
besides the business itself, uh, are, going, are going to grow enormously through this avenue of optic fiber uh, across the South Pacific. So let's revitalize that, but underwater this time. And I'm saying this and, and the following point. We have uh, subjects which are very much of interest to us, as for you, uh, such as climate change, pollution of the oceans, El Niño and La Niña, and all the effects that had on our production, our agricultural production, on our sustainability, on our food security, so to say, yeah, and the food chain, among other, many other things. Okay, we have centers of excellence and you have centers of excellence. We can be mutual landing points for the regions of the knowledge. Chilean scientists using your centers of excellence is here to do a research here in the tropical environment, and you can use through this line, the centers of excellence in Chile and research centers and so on use, uh, for different general dairy, dairy products, uh, earthquakes, emergencies, uh, and, 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 you know, uh, how you say, uh, monitoring the oceans, the stability, the plastic, uh, the plastic islands and so on. So this is what I said. Let's put a tangible into where can we grow on services. We can grow through this channel immensely. Very, very interesting point. You know, I just want to quickly recap some of your points. Uh, you know, there, there's so much areas of growth between the both countries. You mentioned that uh, Malaysia should look at Chile as the gateway to not just Latin America, but the American continent, uh, which, which is a point that you made earlier to, uh, just now. You know, it's not just about South America, but also you know, northern, the North America. Um, it's interesting that you mentioned about the point on uh, centers of excellence uh, for climate, food security, um, FNB, sustainability, specifically on, on plastic. Uh, such interesting points because I think this is something that you usually don't, don't really get talked about. I think the issue with, I think, a lot of um, the when Malaysians think of uh, South America, it, if they think of it, is that it's, it's too far, right? The, the distance sometimes is, is too far. Close. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and I'm the, here, it's, it's close. close. <laughs> it's close. You I'm here. here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Excellency, you know, let's, let's, let's go towards... Um, the, the other side of diplomatic uh, aspects you mentioned just now about uh, the sports, uh, food. Can, can you talk a, a little bit more about the cultural cooperation between Chile and Malaysia? The cultural yeah. cooperation. Yeah. Okay. The, yeah, whether it's educational, cultural, people to be population. Let, let's go to that aspect and, and let me spend some time talking about uh, that, you know, between Malaysia and Chile. Well, the cultural is. It speaks some specs, you see. The, one of the elements that we would like to stress on this, you know, when I mentioned the historic, uh, the historic uh, elements, is that we get through these uh, modern systems, online systems, get the youth to know each other. How? Linking universities, knowing that there is uh, as varied as Southeast Asia is, Latin America is more than a sombrero and samba, with due respect, or soccer and Machu Picchu, because they are icons that are linked to one particular culture or country. But people don't know the incredible richness that within Brazil, within Chile, within Peru or any other country, Mexico, uh, uh, would it is. Listen. Uh, if I can say, I'm reading this book, and this is only Malacca. Malacca, 84 languages were spoken only in Malacca. Now, and th this sort of, of, of thought, wow. we have to think on Latin America. Yeah, we speak all Spanish. But we speak different kinds of Spanish. We cook different. The, one type of food goes to many, many uh, areas. So uh, one of the, uh, the elements on the culture that we want to do is to... Uh, bond uh, concerts and uh, musicians and uh, films uh, through the internet. And also composing things that recover that rich history. At this moment, uh, we have uh, <clears throat> two uh, sisterhood agreements. One is Malacca Historical Port and Valparaiso Historical Port. And Valparaiso, you can see it right behind you there. It is a painting that is Valparaiso, 
yeah, and uh, Malacca. That is 30 years already this year. And there's another sisterhood in between Portland and, and, and San Antonio, the, the largest container port of Chile. So what we want to do is uh, to design a mural. We want it visual. We want to put a 15 meter long and two meters high mosaic mural talking about the history of the trip of Henry of Malacca and meeting the people in Tierra del Fuego 500 years ago. But in that, that thing is actually a saga that which we want to reflect in a mural, in a musical work, which is a cantata, it's like, it's not, it's like an azarzuela, yeah, with dancing and so, with music of the times, of the place that Henry of Malacca traveled on those, on those years, uh, but composing the story, and also uh, to put this into uh, an electronic game. An electronic game, that will be competitive online, that uh, once you will see that there's a lot of seaweed floating that uh, hampers your, your traveling by sail, which was clean, and then overlap and immediately see as an island of plastic and an engine putting oil into the water. How would you solve that problem? What are your proposals for the future? Uh, let's, let's spike out the startups from what was 500 years ago and what we really have now. But the, this cultural exchange, I want to promote it through the means we have today, the internet, which can, we can do that. Yeah. This, this sort of element. I hope we can manage to do this mosaic. We already, uh, the, the, the musical uh, is already uh, in work. It will be finished by October. The mosaic uh, will be half made in Chile, ship it over here and stick it onto a wall with Malaysian people doing the other part. Uh, and that would be done uh, in Malacca. Yeah, uh, hopefully in 2022, which is the year when 500 years since Henry Malacca returned to, to, to the peninsula. So this is uh, the area uh, I would like to, to focus very much to get the, the young people interest to travel here in the work and holidays, which have the region, so they will see how is the rich taste, the rich music, the 84 languages of Malacca, which were once spoken, and, uh, and vice versa. From the people here, I think, it's not that far to go to Patagonia. It's not that far. Yeah, it actually may take a bit longer to travel. But once you're there, it would be a lot cheaper to survive because the costs are different. And it's beautiful. It's, it's, you know, it, it will infuse the spirit of people on those incredible areas, you know, clean, pristine glaciers, uh, open seas, whales all over in, in the largest marine park in the planet, which is Chile, is a sanctuary for whales. We are a sanctuary for whales. So, this culture is what we have to bring together. Now, I would like just to close up a bit on this getting to know each other. In terms of business, to incorporate the young people, to do it attractive, we should meet. But, okay, a Chile Chamber of Commerce with Malaysia? Maybe, maybe, but maybe we're not too many. Why not the Pacific Alliance Chamber of Commerce with Malaysia? You see, Pacific Alliance is four countries in the Pacific, Mexico, Colombia, Peru, and Chile. Or the Latin American group, the La Singapore has a Latin chamber, a Latin American chamber. Well, not necessarily a chamber, but why not starting a dialogue, a forum, a regular forum with Latin America, Malaysia, Latin American forum, online. The only problem on this is not because we're far. We have mm, 12 hours difference. Therefore, somebody has to wake up at 8 o'clock in the morning and the other has to be at 8 o'clock in the evening or vice versa, right? But well, for an hour, an hour and a half, that's fine. We can do that. We can do that for soccer. We can do it for the World Cup. Hey, we can do it for <laughs> getting to know each other. <laughs>
Um, because there's so many, so many points you mentioned just now. But I know the, the the audience that didn't see uh, for the ones listening on podcast, you may not have seen the book that Ambassador was uh, showing us. It's called "Where Eighty Four Languages Were Once Spoken: An Account of Lacan from 1400 to uh, 1824" by Devinder Raj. And the author? And, uh, uh, Devinder Devinder Raj, yes. And and the ambassador was also pointing to a picture of a uh, Val pa- pa- Valparaíso. 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 Going to paradise. Va al paraíso. Going to paradise. <laughs> that's yeah. That's the name. Perfect. Perfect. I love the name. And and, uh, and, and the ambassador was showing that picture uh, because the Malacca and that city are sister cities. Um, ambassador, there's so many points that you mentioned just now about you know the online gaming of uh, the journey of Henry of Malacca, the mosaic, uh, the the musical. Um, The, the corporation, the idea about you know uh, Singapore has a Latin charm, which is a Latin American Chamber of Commerce. Malaysia should have a, a series of network or forums to allow people to interact with each other. And you mentioned about the Pacific Alliance, where you know Malaysia, Malaysia, and Malaysians and Southeast Asians should maybe get to know the Pacific Alliance and 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 see how can we connect with each other. Um, I want to just quickly ask you the question on traveling to Chile because I think this is not something that is foremost on people's mind. Can, can, can you maybe walk us through the journey? I mean, you mentioned there's a talk hour. Better- So we're twelve hours apart. You better oh, fly. Exactly. Walking is difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, uh, okay. Can you walk us through in terms of uh, the distance, the flying distance to to Chile, and okay. when you get to Chile, where should you go in Chile, and and maybe what are the the the, the things that you should be thinking of doing in Chile? Maybe just for the, our audience to uh, wondering about okay. going to Chile. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, so walking is difficult. Uh, uh, swimming is too long. <laughs> you have to fly. Uh, no, no doubt. Uh, unless you do it through the cable, open cable, and do do it virtually. Um, to Chile, you can actually, since we're exactly on the other side, twelve hours, you know, difference at this moment. You can take any route whenever there's no COVID here. Okay. Uh, the most, the, the shortest one in terms of flying hours are those who go from Malaysia to New Zealand and Australia, right? Whether it's Sydney or 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 um, Auckland, and then hop over uh, to Chile, yeah, uh, or over Easter Island or or, or Rapa Nui, which is a name. Uh, that would be from here to Sydney, probably is what seven hours. Mm-hmm. About that, yeah. Yes. Plus, and then it's about twelve and a half hours uh, from Sydney to Santiago or Auckland to Santiago, about the same. So it's less flying hours. Uh, and uh, is one go. Now going there, you will feel um, you will feel that you have jet lag, okay? But it's okay. You just change breakfast <laughs> for dinner. Uh, <laughs> that's not a problem. When you come here back, you actually uh, you feel the jet lag a lot less. When you go to Chile, you feel a bit long, longer. But Chile is uh, th- that is uh, the closest route, okay? Uh, but you still have the one through Europe. You know, linking from here to uh, Germany or Paris, uh, uh, and then or hop over the, the the Atlantic through Brazil or Argentina, and obviously the northern hemisphere, which is the longest. You go from here to Korea or Japan, and then you take all United States and go south. That 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 is probably the longest. I've done every of those routes, every single one, uh, and I still don't think it's too far. Now. Uh, what do you do when you arrive in Chile? It depends on what you want to do. It depends on the day. Because if you like, you know, archaeology or you know astronomy, you can go to the north, the desert, where all these, uh, uh, you know, uh, the largest observatories in the planet, the largest set of observatories from all the countries. I mean, Japan, European Union, and uh, United States, Australia, are in Chile, in the north of Chile, because. It, The, the sky is so pure and clear uh, in the middle of the desert that you actually, if you lay down the, the night, you look at there, you feel the stars are falling right on your ear, on, on your on your eyes. So that uh, archaeology is fantastic in in that region, uh, and you have a lot of surf in the seaside for those who like uh, surf or you know or fishing, spear fishing. It's cold water, but You get a lot of very big fish, very tasty fish. So that's on the and then on the center you can go all these sports like uh, you know snow, uh, snow skiing in the mountains and 
three hours, four hours after you can be water skiing in the Pacific Ocean. Because this is a narrow country. We have more water than land, 200 miles of water and 200 kilometers of land as an average in, in the continent. If you want something unique, you stop over in, in Rapa Nui, in Easter Island. It's a speck almost 3,000 miles from, from the continent, but the history there is, is amazing. And they are the only ones that, with the, with the New Zealanders, that they have their own hoko. They have a hoko. The New Zealanders, uh, you know, the Maoris have haka. But the only two cultures that remain in, those, in the entire Pacific with those dances because the males survived the colonials and the others they were wiped out so then uh you go to southern southern area and about well, sorry center you have the wines the, the meat uh, empanadas the asados the barbecues the dancing all that and it goes to the south as well with the seafood with curantos which is food which is cooked in a hole in the ground which is from the pacific so they just make a hole, oh. cover it with stones, burn a big fire until the red hot uh, mm. stones. Then they put the food inside, layers of uh, layers of palms, like palm is another plant, big, big layers of, of, of leaves. And then they close it for 12 hours or eight hours to simmer. And then you eat, uh, well, I tell you, it's, good. it's to have a very long siesta afterwards. And the southernmost, you go to the glaciers, you go to see, um, uh, how you say, uh, sort of dinosaurs, uh, and, you know, and petrified ones, or you can go to Antarctica. Antarctica, uh, which, by the way, is something interesting in climate change. Chile has opened the first observatory of climate change in Antarctica. It's a project of 2,000 kilometers long with 21 stations from the Antarctic Peninsula to the Southern Pole. We are working on that as we speak. So that's a variety. Now, if you cross to, to South America, to Chile, and to Patagonia, we have to be sure. Take a, a bit more time and go to Peru or to Argentina and visit the other areas because each country has its beauty. So we are a gateway. We are not a dead gate. We are a gateway. <laughs> this is important. <laughs> This is such an interesting conversation, uh, Ambassador. I think you will have you are probably the best uh, tourist guide for all of us here in Malaysia. You walk <laughs> us through from the northern region, <coughs> excuse me, central region, southern region. So interesting from from astrology, surfing, fishing, snow skiing, uh, the cultural performances, food dancing, dinosaurs. Uh, Master, we don't have much time left. Which you know, it's been such an enriching conversation. Sometimes when you have such a good conversation, you don't look at the time. But we only have about three or four minutes left. I just want to ask you, for people that are listening in, the 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 policy makers, the young leaders, the think tankers, the policy guys, you know, the business people. What is your call to action for them? Well, no, if you if you had one or two messages to leave for them, what what do you think should they remember from this conversation about Malaysia Chile relations? Oh. I would say not only to the authorities. I mean, this is to everyone. Uh, I think we have to remember one very specific point. Many people say that we are uh, VIPs, very important persons. Uh, I think the VIP stands for a very important position. Position from where you have to stand down because the chair is only on the floor. Go to the, to the groundwork, meet with the people, open say, and say, please, what would you like to do? And let me see as a public servant what I can do for helping you to do it. Once we listen to that, I've, my experience is 42 years a diplomat. Whenever I've done that, I had overload of initiatives and very much half of them have got through because people need the public servants in order to do the links, but it's the people who moves it. It's the people. You have an idea, if nobody listens, the idea goes in, it stays with you. If somebody listens, say, well, but I know somebody else, because I, the beautiful point of being a diplomat is that we are actually knowing everyone on many different positions. So one thing today, in one year more, I may link with something Somebody else said 
in one year more. And once you put the link, you put the horses to the water, just make sure the water is clean and the, wo- the horses will drink themselves. I think that is my message. We have to be linkers. Nice. Thank you. Ambassador, what, you know, such a pertinent me- message for people to be bridge builders and, and to connect with each other, during, especially during times of, uh, of difficult times like now. Um, Ambassador, what, what is the best way people can reach you or the embassy uh, just for oh, our listeners out there? Well, we have a web page. We were trying to update with all these documents and information. And obviously, uh, uh, my name, my, my, please do share my, my email, d for Diego Velasco, d Velasco at mineral.gobble with capital B uh, dot CL. Please do share. I'll be very happy. Oh, Anyone sure. just is direct, direct, direct. No, no red tapes. <laughs> we are three diplomats only. We have to be open to any possibility. We're very happy to be here and so good to be Bali Kampong. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ambassador. You know, I I, I just uh, I will share. Uh, we will do our best to share the the the, the ambassador's email on on screen later on. Uh, you know, just to recap uh, the web page as well. I will I will just quickly ask uh, audience if you're interested to know more to Google Chile Embassy uh, Chile Embassy in Malaysia. Uh, you will go to our website, uh, which is chile dot gob dot cl, and with the rest of the link, uh, check it out. They are based in a uh, Wisma Selangor Dredging uh, in Jalan Ampang KL. Their email for um, the, the, there's two emails uh, that on the website Kolumpo at consulado and also reception at embassy of Chile dot We'll also uh, share uh, the ambassador's email or, on or for all of our audience today. So that if you don't, if you have any ideas, comments, questions, not complaints, uh, then you can uh, potentially uh, you can just uh, share all uh, of your uh, feedback and thoughts and ideas for the ambassador. Uh, so that he can um, find ways to make magic and build bridges between Malaysians and Chileans. With that, Ambassador, thank you so much for your time. You know, and uh, it's been a pleasure having you. Such an enriching conversation we've had about economic, uh, the cultural, uh, tourism. It was, you know, it was amazing. Uh, and 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 you know, uh, finding ways for us to collaborate. So thank you so much, Ambassador. Thank you so much for your time. Banyak terima kasih atas kesempatannya. I really appreciate. Muchas muchas gracias y bienvenidos. Thank you. Hasta luego, hasta luego, Ambassador. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Thank you. Muchas gracias.